Okay. Um, so, what we are going to be talking about today is the different note-taking systems that you can use throughout the course uh, in order to take your notes on whatever you're reading. So whether it's from the textbook, uh, whether it's from a web page, doing your research, whatever you need to use it for, there are different systems that are the, an option for you. So we're going to go through those. Okay. So the first method is called the Cornell method. And how that looks is very similar to this. So you would set your page up. Um, with a column, uh, two columns, and then at the bottom a little area for your summaries. So the Q column holds different words that uh, mean something to you. They cue some sort of memory or for you to remember the information. And on your note-taking area, you would put all the information about that Q word. So you can see here, uh, this is just an example showing you solids and then the information about solids, liquids, information about liquids, uh, etc, etc. And on the bottom you would put a little summary of what you learned throughout that lesson and uh, it would again it would give you a way to summarize and remember the information that you learned from that class. Okay, and here's another example done typewritten. So again you can different people use different methods. Some people like to type out their notes, others like to use handwriting. So here you can see um, the different keywords on the side with the title, child development, and then in the middle or on the right side is the information about the different terms. And then at the bottom a little bit of a summary about the theory that um, the notes are about. Okay, so that is the first method. Second, we have the outline method, uh, and this is an outline, so it gives you different material divided into the different topics, and depending on where you indent it determines what type of um, information it is. So you would have main topics, subtopics, and then your details. So your first main topic would be out to the far left, your subtopic uh, it could be there, or it also could be indented, but you would um, identify it with a different first letter or number. So you might use uh, an, a 1 for your first name topic, and then switch to letters for subtopic. Again, whatever works for you, this is just an example. Okay, then you would have your first detail, your second detail, um, and then if you had more details, you would continue, or of course, you would move on to your second subtopic, for example. Okay, and this is just, uh, you'll see an outline here of what it looks like. So at the top you have all of the topics, the main topics defined, and then as you go through and you make your notes, you can see how it's broken down and indented accordingly, depending on what level of detail and what um, area the notes are coming from. Alright, and then the next method is the mapping method and you might also refer to this as a mind map or a graphic organizer okay. so you start with identifying the main topic and that's usually in the center of your mind map and then you have your subtopics coming out from your main topic and I'm going to show you an example in a second um, and then as you come out from your subtopics, then you have your details around your subtopics. Okay, so here's just one example. Your study skills are in the center, and then the different subtopics come out from there. So your strategies, time, your cognitive strategies, um, time management strategies. Okay, and then you can see how it comes out from there. This is another way you can do it, so creating columns and mapping out in that in that way. So not necessarily as a graphic uh, mind map, but more as in mapping it out uh, individually and breaking it down in topics. The fourth method is our charting method, 
Uh, and you can see here you start by identifying whatever categories and making your table and then labeling it. And then throughout the lecture, throughout the reading, whatever you're, uh, you are taking notes from for the lesson, making sure you put all of the information into each um, part of the chart. Nice clean way to keep your information organized. Also a great study tool. So you could also, you know, start with the outline method and then, you know, when you're making study notes, move into the charting method. Everyone works differently, so it's good to have options. And the last method is our sentence method. And how that works is you record everything and move to a new line every time something new is, is covered. And in this method, it's important to develop your own shorthand. So short forms for different words that mean something to you. Um, and make sure you leave space. So if you are listening to something and you know that there's more but you or you want to go back and add something just leave a little space uh, and then at the end making sure you review everything and add in any information that you need okay so if your teacher says revolution is an occurrence that affects other aspects of life such as economic life social life and so forth therefore revolutions cause change see your textbooks page five to seven your sentence method of making notes could look like this. Revolution, currents that affects other aspects of life, example, econ, slash, soch, etc. Um, and then pages five to seven. Okay, so you get all the information in there, uh, but not word for word, and it gives you the ability to go back and kind of review based on the notes you took. Okay, so there you have it. Those are five examples of notes that you can, note taking methods that you can use. And choose whichever ones work for you, and uh, you may find for one type of uh, note taking, one type, one, you choose one type, and then for another situation, you choose another. All right. Bye for now.